2025 is almost here and while everyone else is busy making new year resolutions that they will forget by the first week of January, I have created something that actually works. A 14 day challenge designed to help you level up as a UX designer and start the year with confidence and unstoppable energy. Forget Netflix, forget all the distractions. For the next two weeks, you're going to push yourself like never before. I want you to focus entirely on your career. Your skill set and your portfolio, they deserve it. These two weeks will be all about sharpening your skills, your design skills, brushing up the essential knowledge and finally taking that leap where it is applying to your dream job or creating something that stands out in this already saturated field. As AVP of Design at Swiggy, with over a decade of experience, I have seen how fast the UX and product design field is evolving. Too many designers play it safe, repeating ideas and sticking to what's comfortable and it's holding them back and they may not even be realizing it. In this industry, staying stagnant isn't an option. If you want to thrive, you need to keep learning, push boundaries and create work that stands out. The future belongs to those who dare to lead and not follow. This is a no-nonsense, high-impact and totally doable 14-day plan. If you stick with it, I promise you, you will enter 2025 stronger, more confident and more prepared than ever to crush your goals. Are you ready? Let's get started. Day one, day two and day three, I need you to focus on Figma fundamentals. Now you might be thinking, hey, I already know Figma fundamentals. I'm a designer and I've been working on Figma for the past many, many years. But when I say Figma fundamentals, I don't mean the Figma basics. I need you to master the intermediate Figma skills, most notably variables and auto layout. Now, variables and auto layout has got nothing to do with UX design as such, but they are powerful Figma tools regardless. And if you master them and know how and when to use it, you can potentially save a lot of time in your design process by removing a lot of redundant steps. A while back, I had done a poll on Instagram asking people which part of Figma do you find the most difficult? And majority of them had called out auto layout. Well, back then variables was not even available. But even till this day, the story remains same and people still find auto layout extremely complicated. That's why, you need to learn these two skills. Now, it doesn't end here. Here are two playlists which I have handpicked from the entire YouTube, which I believe is the easiest, fastest, and the best way to master these two things on Figma. These playlists are actually created by Figma themselves, so they cover the concepts and the fundamentals beautifully. Now, the point of learning this is not that, you know, you learn auto layout and you start applying auto layout to each and every thing that you build on Figma. No, that's not the point. When you learn these things properly, you'll also know when to use them, when not to use them. When you're documenting something and you know that, you know, it is done, it is like frozen and baked and only things could be changed maybe the dimensions and all could be changed, that's when you use auto layout and not while you're exploring. Because when you're exploring as a part of your design journey, you need to put your entire brain on the problem solving aspects of it and not how to create that component on auto layout and how to make it work this way and that. Because you need undivided attention for the problem solving itself. So that's one bit of warning. And those were the first three days. And I would also want you to do one more thing in parallel throughout the course of this 15 days, from day one all the way up to day 15. I need you to document your journey journey for all this 15 days on social media. And there is a big reason why I'm asking you to do this. Every day, you go to social media and write a post about what progress you made on that day. And this is not just to create content or anything. This is so that you put yourself out in public so that people, your friends and relatives and everyone who follows you on social media can hold you accountable in case you do not show up one particular day. This is an attempt to keep you consistent. And trust me, when you put it out there on public and there are lots of people waiting to see your progress. And if you do not post one particular day, you become conscious and you know that, okay, there are people waiting for me so maybe I'll just do it and go post it so it is so that people can hold you accountable so do it every day religiously day one all the way up to day 15 whatever progress you have made whatever you have learned whatever difficulties you have faced just write one short paragraph on LinkedIn or put up some stories on Instagram or a post on Instagram and tell the world that you have taken this 15 day challenge and today was day one and ask them to hold you accountable in case you do not get back the next day or next couple of days. All right, next, day four and day five, I need you to, you won't be expecting this, master the pen tool. Yes, you would have not heard anyone giving this advice, but I have a strong reason why I'm giving this. You know what the pen tool is. You have it on Figma, you have it on Photoshop, you have it in Illustrator, and you have it on almost every design tool that you can think of. Now, why I need you to master pen tool is because 
pen tool is one of the most flexible way to create anything organic shape within this design tools. And although it was started with Photoshop, it works almost in the same way in every design tool, including Figma. You would obviously have seen the pen tool at the top. You might have never used it. Now, why I need you to master it is because not just for the pen tool itself. It's not that once you learn pen tool, you will keep using pen tool in your UX design journey. Maybe not all that much. But what pen tool does is it liberates you mentally and you are much more comfortable taking something up and modifying it. If you watch my videos, you must have heard me talking about downloading illustrations and icons from the internet and then modifying it to fit your needs. For most of you, it will probably be changing the color or changing you know adding a stroke or not adding a stroke and so on and so forth but once you master the pen tool you unlock one more thing itself which is adding subtracting and modifying organic shapes to an illustration and trust me that changes the game that will actually modify something downloadable into a form which is very different from what you have downloaded and that in my mind is the right way of using downloadable assets and not directly having what you have on the internet. I'm attaching these two tutorials. One of them is by Figma and the second one is by Piximperfect. Of course, he speaks about the pen tool in Photoshop, but the fundamentals of pen tool remain same across all tools. You may feel free to start using it on Figma itself and make sure that of all the tutorials that I'm talking about here, the right way to watch a tutorial is not just to watch like this. It is to watch pause and practice. Watch, pause and practice. That is the only and the most perfect way of watching a tutorial because if you just watch it like a movie, my friend, nothing is going to happen. You will not learn anything. You would have just watched a movie. That's about it. So right way to watch a tutorial is watch, pause, practice. Watch, pause, practice. Make it a mantra. All right. The next three days, day six, day seven and day eight, I need you to learn advanced prototyping. No, I don't mean the prototyping that you have within Figma. Well, what you have within Figma is good. It's simple. It connects the dots and creates some sort of a prototype, which is workable for most of the cases. But here I'm talking about advanced prototyping. Advanced prototyping is a prototype which looks and feels just like a real app from all the interactions and stuff that is possible on a real app, when you're able to replicate each and everything on a prototype, that's what I mean by advanced prototyping. Now, there are many tools out there using which you can learn to pick, but I have tried most of those tools. And after trying all of them, what I have concluded is there's this tool called Protopy. Again, this is not a sponsored video. I genuinely feel Protopy is good because the ratio of effort is to output is very, very favorable in case of Protopy. Meaning you put the least amount of effort, the learning curve is relatively lower and the output that you get out of this, that is the kind of prototypes that you can make by learning that much, it's really, really good. Now, when you learn Protopy, apply the same mantra, watch, pause and practice and keep one thing in mind about prototyping. Details matter everything. It is not just about knowing how to use that tool and learning the features and all. It is about you able to replicate all the details and nuances that you see on a real app. It could be like when you tap a button, what happens to the button? Maybe it just scales down a bit and then again it scales up back to the stage and then the page loads from left to right, it slides in and all. All those micro nuances actually matter. These are the things that make a prototype feel like a real app. That's the level of fidelity you should aim for. And in addition to that, Protopy also has way too many other features like you can use the camera, you can use accelerometer, you can use haptic feedback and all of them. All these things also contribute to making the prototype feel like a real app. And this is 2024. No, it's 2025 almost. And if you still do not know at least one advanced prototyping tool, you are cheating on your own self, my friend. All right, next is day nine, day 10 and day 11. Now in these three days, I need you to master motion design. Now, some of you might be already scared when you hear the word motion design, but trust me, it is not as tough as you think. And these three days are actually enough for you to get started with some serious motion design and animation. I'm talking about 2D right now with After Effects. Now, I have a playlist of After Effects tutorials. It's a series of around 12 or 13 videos, but I need you to focus only on the first five videos. Well, if you can watch all of them, nothing like it. But if you watch only the first five videos of that series, I'll keep it linked in the description. That is more than enough to get you started all the way from scratch. And when I say scratch, I mean a person who has never ever used or seen 
after effects at all so that's how i have made the tutorials so that anyone who knows nothing can start from zero and go all the way up to fairly advanced stage so focus on the first five videos minimum and if you watch them with the same funda watch pause practice watch pause practice and trust me you will master after effects in those three days now if you're wondering about way i don't have the license after effects offers seven days of trial so just start the trial whenever you are starting this you have seven days to play around with and once you get better with after effects and you have evidences to show Show that you are good at it you can go to your manager or your company and ask for an official license next is day 12 day 13 and day 14. now in these three days i need you to review portfolio whose portfolio your own portfolio well so far you might have heard about someone else reviewing your portfolio be it your employer or some senior person who is reviewing your portfolio and giving you some feedback and stuff but in these three days i need you to reflect on your own portfolio and review it as if it was made by somebody else. Look at your own portfolio as if you are the interviewer and your portfolio is the portfolio of a candidate. Be non-judgmental and be very practical and call out all the mistakes that you see on it. Once you objectively look at your own portfolio and find out the mistakes, when you look at it from the shoes of someone who doesn't know what that project is, you will understand a lot of gaps that you have in your portfolio. Now, why are we doing this? This is an attempt to go and fix some of the mistakes that you might have done in the past. And this is also an opportunity to apply some of the things that you have learned in the past 10 or 11 days as a part of this challenge. Could be, you know, you add a snippet of a prototype or you do better UI design because you've learned something as a part of pen tool or Figma variables and auto layout learning. Or you could even add some animations and stuff to some of this portfolio to enrich it much more. There are often cases that, you know, say someone cooks something and then you don't really like it. And after that, you know, you add some sugar, spice and salt to it. Maybe, you know, do some things around it. You fix that recipe and make it much more tastier, isn't it? Well, if you haven't done it, I'm sure or your mom or dad somebody would have done it in their life speak to them and you will get an understanding i need you to do the same thing to your projects as well all right now we are left with just one day day 15 in day 15 i need you to find the answers to two questions no these questions are not about design or anything these questions are about yourself the two questions are tell me about yourself and the next question is what do you do now, this sound very simple, very easy, but 99% of the people in this world never prepare for these questions. But trust me, the magic happens only in the first 1%. Now, why only these two questions? Because these two are the questions that you get asked in the very initial stage when you're interacting with anyone. Now, this interaction could be at a networking event where you're meeting a peer or a senior or it could be even in your interview when you're speaking to your interview. One of the first questions that your interviewer is going to ask you is, what do you do or tell me about yourself or let's have a brief introduction and in all these cases in most of these cases people end up speaking on the fly you know they don't really think about who they really are and they just make some answer on the fly don't do that because this is the first impression you're having with any person and the more prepared you are and the kind of answer you give actually sets the first impression with that person and first impression matters a lot i don't have to tell you so prepare answers to these questions and you know what you can use chat gpt to your rescue in this go to chat gpt and write different bullet points about yourself who you are where have you studied what do you work what do you like what do you dislike don't worry about grammar composition at all and that's the whole point of writing bullet points it could be bullet points it could be words it could be paragraphs it could be sentences anything make sure that you just dump all the data as much as you can about yourself in those bullet points make it 5 10 20 bullet points if you want and after you have written all these bullet points write this prompt let me read it out for you using the following bullet points about me please craft a meaningful and engaging response to the question what do you do summarize it in three simple sentences using plain language so that even someone who's not in the tech industry can also understand it use analogies wherever necessary and avoid any technical terms so yes this entire thing becomes your prompt and then hit enter you will see chat gpt helping you with some responses of course do not blindly pick one of the responses that chat gpt writes for you take that as a starting point modify it a bit but whatever chat gpt gives is also going to be fairly well crafted better than what you would say when you are thinking on the fly and trying to answer these questions repeat the same process for the other question as well what to do the same bullet points would work just while writing the prompt change the question that is what do you do 
to maybe tell me more about yourself and you will have an answer based on the same content but two different custom crafted answer for yourself now see it's the point is not just about these two questions once you get comfortable preparing answers for trivial questions like this once you're comfortable asking chat gpt to help you out with responses that you can say in your day-to-day -day life you will build a habit and then you will see yourself going back to chat gpt and thinking about some other trivial questions that you face in your life and that is extremely important it's not just about an introduction or a networking event at times even as a part of your job you may see yourself articulating and explaining your ideas and thoughts as to why did you design it like this you may see yourself in front of a board room where there are ceos and vps and other prominent people and you're explaining them why this is the direction that you should take in all these instances it is your verbal communication that helps the more used to you are about preparing these questions the better you would be and these two questions that i have said tell me about yourself and what do you do could be the starting points towards you preparing for such questions so that it becomes a habit and you start preparing for other questions in the future as well You've got the plan. Now it's up to you to go all in and make it happen. I've added a Google Sheet in your description to help you track your progress. Share your journey on Instagram and LinkedIn with hashtag allinux and let your work do all the talking. This is Sapta signing off. See you all in the next one.